Admiral Flota Sovietskava Soyuza Kuznetsov, or Kuznetsov for short, is the only operational aircraft carrier of Russia, at least on paper. Defined by the Russian Navy as Tirshuli Avianosushi Kraser, meaning heavy aircraft carrying cruiser, she has been undergoing a refit since 2017. Many believe the ship, whose service life has already been problematic, is now seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. As the weapon detective, we're now investigating Kuznetsov and the nature of her issues. Kuznetsov has been the flagship of the Russian Navy since the dissolution of the USSR. However, she has faced numerous problems and has never been able to operate efficiently. After the last overhaul and modernization program, which could not be finalized since 2017, Moscow appears to have finally abandoned her. The Soviet Navy had been keen on acquiring an aircraft carrier since the 1920s. However, economic and technical issues along with the Second World War prevented this ambition from materializing. In March 1953, just a couple months after Stalin died, Admiral Nikolai Kuznetsov, who was Commander-in-Chief of the Navy and Minister of the Navy, approved the construction of a Project 85-class light aircraft carrier. However, Khrushchev preferred to allocate the budget toward nuclear weapons and missiles. Following the sinking of the battleship Navarasik, he replaced Kuznetsov with Admiral Sergei Garshkov and cancelled the Project 85 program. Nevertheless, in the 1960s, the USSR commissioned two Project 1123-class helicopter cruisers whose NATO reporting name is the Moskva class. Then, in the 1970s, the Project 1143-class aircraft carrying cruiser began to follow them. With the NATO reporting name of the Kiev class, these ships were only suitable for operating Vistol Yak-38s. However, this aircraft had critically poor performance, therefore the Navy required a fleet carrier-type vessel capable of deploying conventional takeoff and landing combat jets. Under the ROL program, in 1973, a design bureau was assigned to develop the design of a vessel known as the Project 1160 class. It would have a displacement of 75,000 to 80,000 tons, nuclear propulsion and four steam catapults. The ship would carry 70 aircraft. However, the Project 1160 class was too large for the technical capabilities of the Soviet shipyards and the defense budget. Consequently, the design was modified to a 60,000-ton carrier with a conventional propulsion system. The ship, known as the Project 1153 class, was also cancelled due to cost. Another reason for this decision was the Soviet engineers could not develop a functional steam catapult. Furthermore, Defense Minister Dmitry Ustinov, who relied on the Project Yak-141, was against a carrier with a catapult-assisted takeoff but arrested recovery launch and recovery system. Ultimately, in 1979, the design evolved into Project 1143.5 class. The name was odd, as the new carrier bore little resemblance to the Kiev class ships. Because the USSR was unable to develop a working steam catapult, the design of the new vessel included a ski jump. Originally, the USSR named the first ship of its class as Vega. However, when she was laid down on April 1, 1982, her name was changed to Leonid Brezhnev. The carrier, launched on December 6, 1985, was renamed Tbilisi in 1987. The Soviet Navy commissioned the vessel on January 20, 1991. While she conducted trials with aircraft in the Black Sea, the USSR dissolved. To prevent Ukraine from claiming her, the ship, renamed Kuznetsov, was urgently passed through the Turkish Straits and headed for the North Sea. The USSR launched the second ship of this class, Vega, in 1988. After the Union dissolved, she was renamed as Varyak, which was then purchased by China and completed as Liaoning. Russia defines Kuznetsov as an aircraft carrying cruiser, not an aircraft carrier. It is a simple maneuver to bypass the restrictions of the 1936 Montreux Convention. Nonetheless, due to its long-range surface-to-surface -surface missiles, the vessel can still be regarded as a kind of cruiser. Kuznetsov features 12 vertical launchers mounted beneath the flight deck ski jump for P-700 Granite anti-ship missiles. With the NATO reporting name of SSN-19 Shipwreck, 
This active radar homing missile has a range of over 450 kilometers and can be equipped with a 750 kilogram high explosive or a 500 kiloton nuclear warhead. Powered by turbojet and ramjet engines, it exceeds a top speed of Mach 2.5. However, installing the P-700 limits the carrier's aviation capabilities. During the missile launches, flight operations must cease as the silo hatch is open on the flight deck. Kuznetsov has two takeoff runs indicated by jet efflux deflector plates. The one on the starboard side is 85 meters long and begins just ahead of the superstructure. The port run measures 170 meters in length but has an interim start at 85 meters. Each start point is equipped with two jet efflux deflector plates. When the long port run is in use, landing operations cannot be conducted on the 7 degree angle deck. During takeoff, special undercarriage catches hold the aircraft and jet efflux deflector plates enable the use of the afterburners. The 14 degree ski jump facilitates the aircraft's takeoff with additional fuel and armament. During landing, the jet must catch one of the four arrestor wires spaced approximately 14 meters apart. The flight deck measures 304.5 meters in length and 70 meters in width, covering a total area of 14,700 square meters. The hangar has a length of 183 meters, a width of 29.4 meters and a height of 7.5 meters. It can accommodate up to 18 aircraft. Two elevators, each 20 meters long and 15 meters wide with a 40-ton capacity, connect the hangar to the flight deck. According to the original project specifications, the ship is designed to carry up to 33 fixed-wing aircraft and 12 helicopters. Before undergoing refit, the Russian Navy deployed Su-33 and Su-25 UTG aircraft as well as Ka-27 and Ka-31 helicopters. If Kuznetsov is recommissioned, the MiG-29Ks will replace the Su-33s. Occasionally, the Ka-29s and Ka-52Ks were deployed from the carrier to support amphibious operations. On paper, the ship boasts an impressive air defense capability, including 192 vertically launched 3K-95 Kinjal missiles with a range of 12 km. Also, she is armed with 8 Cortic Closen weapon systems consisting of two 6-barrel 30mm guns and eight 9M311 missiles with a range of 8 km. Additionally, the ship has six 6-barrel 30mm AK-630s. The vessel is equipped with two 10-barrel RBU-12000 anti-submarine rocket launchers. The rockets have a range of 12,000 meters, an effective depth of 600 meters and an 80kg warhead. The complement of Kuznetsov is 2,626 people, including a 626-person flight group and a 40-person command staff. The ship has a length of 302.3 meters, a beam of 70 meters and a drought of 10.5 meters. Her standard and fully loaded displacements are about 46,650 and 59,440 tons respectively. Kuznetsov has 8 boilers and 4 turbines, generating a total of 200,000 horsepower. Her top speed is 30 knots. The vessel has a range of 8,500 nautical miles, in other words, 15,740 km at an economical speed of 18 knots. Kuznetsov has been out of service since March 2017. The initial plan was to modernize and overhaul the ship to prolong her service life by another 25 years. However, a series of accidents, including the sinking of the floating dry dock PD-50 in 2018 and fires that broke out in 2019 and 2022, along with bad weather, changing priorities and a lack of funds, have hindered the process. In July 2025, some sources claim that Moscow had halted the works on Kuznetsov and 1,500 of her crew members had already formed as the 78,987th Mechanized Battalion of the 1st Tank Army to serve as a combat unit in Ukraine. Additionally, another 130 are now in Sivramorsk, the main administrative base of the Russian Northern Fleet to guard military warehouses. These reports indicate that the ship might be written off before its successor, the Project 23000-class aircraft carrier has even been laid down. 
However, it would be wrong to assume that these recent issues are the only reason Kuznetsov is troublesome. She had already experienced many technical problems before 2017. For example, her steam turbines and turbo pressurized boilers were so unreliable that a large ocean going tug had to accompany the carrier whenever she deployed due to the risk of propulsion system failure. To prevent straining the engine and increasing the risk of failure, Kuznetsov was generally kept at a slow speed. Consequently, the carrier often could not reach the required speed to generate enough momentum for the takeoff of an Su-33 at full takeoff weight. The ship's boiler room was heavily smoky, particularly when feeding large quantities of fuel with an inadequate air supply. Kuznetsov was renowned for her thick funnel smoke. Furthermore, the flaws in the water piping system caused freezing issues during cold weather. To prevent pipes from bursting, the water was periodically shut off in most cabins, which rendered half of the latrines out of order. Nevertheless, Kuznetsov's core issue has been her design philosophy. She was a product of the First Cold War. The Soviet Navy's primary mission was to defend certain areas, called Bastion, to create a secure zone for its own ballistic missile submarines while preventing NATO ships from entering. The Moskva and Kiev classes were essentially ASW helicopter carriers. The latter ships carried Yak-38 to eliminate targets and intercept maritime patrol aircraft, not to engage F-14s or F-4s or to strike naval targets. Kuznetsov was built to extend the air cover range. Her aircraft's primary mission was to intercept NATO fighter jets. According to Soviet doctrine, the Navy would employ long-range supersonic missiles to target Western fleets launched from submarines, long-range bombers, and surface combatants from multiple directions. In this lethal saturation attack, fighter aircraft such as Su-27 or MiG-29K would play no role. Therefore, Sacrificing a large area for 12 P-700 missiles instead of additional aircraft was not unreasonable. Since the combat zone was constantly observed by specifically designed Tu-142, Tu-16 and Tu-22 variants for the job, as well as the IL-38, an early warning aircraft for the carrier had no priority. The ski jump design did not allow operations of large turboprop aircraft anyway. However, in the new world after the USSR dissolved, Russia had no such naval power. To be operated efficiently, Kuznetsov required early warning aircraft. A carrier without strike jets became meaningless in response to new doctrines. The operations in this new era quickly revealed that the Ka-31 was insufficient for the role and the carrier required an early warning aircraft. Moreover, to supply her during a long-range deployment, the Navy required a ship-based cargo aircraft, but the ski jump prevented such deployment. Nevertheless, Russia, which struggled with severe economic difficulties, has not been able to make the necessary changes to the ship. When the economy improved, the conflict in Ukraine shifted priorities in the armed forces. In fact, Russia has never needed a carrier like Kuznetsov for its potential operational areas. She was merely a powerful symbol referring to the glorious days of the USSR by saying that we did not give up. Even during Kuznetsov's deployment of Syria, her aircraft were transferred to Hamamim Air Base near Latakia at some point. These jets could be sent there without needing transport by sea in the first place. She was designed as an aircraft carrying cruiser. Russia did not inherit proper Aegis air defense cruisers or ASW destroyers to protect a naval task force around the carrier. Moreover, the operational readiness level of the existing ships has been problematic since the early 1990s. Therefore, Kuznetsov carried too many ASW helicopters compared to her western counterparts. It was an inefficient method. A Walrus-class submarine of the Royal Netherlands Navy successfully tracked her without being detected for a long time. Although Kuznetsov displays impressive air defense capabilities on paper, the reality is different. Her radars and electronic systems, which have not undergone significant modernization during her service, are virtually ineffective against modern threats. Furthermore, as noted, the ship has not adequate escorts for air cover. If we sum up all these design flaws and other problems that occurred after the dissolution of the USSR, we might say that Kuznetsov would share the same fate as the cruiser Moskva in a possible deployment in the Black Sea.
Kuznetsov probably will not serve another 25 years. It seems that she is nearing her end. Whether Russia will require an aircraft carrier in the next quarter century remains a questionable issue. We believe we made our stance clear on this matter. Please feel free to share your own view. Thanks for watching our video. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click the bell button to be notified of our new videos. Also, you can now click the join button to support our channel. And as always, we would greatly appreciate all of your likes, comments and shares.